Good morning, Ken All About This Church. We're so glad that you're with us this morning. Uh, let's all stand together. We're going to be singing a new song today called In the Light of Your Grace. This is how I know. This is how I know I am yours. That if my heart should condemn me, your truth is so much more. This is how I know I'm secure. That even though I am falling, your love for me endures in the light of your grace. In my darkness, in the light of your grace. My burdens lose their weight in the light of your grace. You lift my head up in the light of your grace. My sin is washed away. This is how I know you're my Lord. That in my weakness you give me the strength to be restored. This is how I know I'm adored. That when I'm lost in my feelings, you tell me I am yours in the light of your grace. You lift my darkness in the light of your grace. My burdens lose their weight in the light of your grace. You lift my head up in the light of your grace. My sin is washed away. Head out of water. This is how I know I am yours. This is how I know I'm secure. This is how I know you're my Lord. This is how I know I'm a In the light of your grace, you in my darkness. In the light of your grace, my burdens lose their weight. In the light of your grace, you lift my head up. In the light of your grace, my sin is washed away. Head out of water, walk on the waves. We turn to wonder. Welcome again, everyone, to Kenola Baptist Church. Uh, we're going to have some announcements. You, you may be seated. Uh, so I think the first one is that we're continue, continuing to be wearing masks inside the building. So uh, please continue to do so when you're in the building. Once you're outside of the building, feel free to take off your masks. Also, um, one person in the bathroom at a time. So if the door is closed, that means it's occupied. Um, I think the next thing is you can follow us online if you have Facebook, uh, Instagram. You can follow us there at Kino Ole Baptist Church or on Instagram, Kino Ole Baptist. And also our uh, YouTube channel is Kibach Media Ministry. So you can find our archive of messages there. Um, if you would like to rewatch or uh, if you missed a Sunday, you can um, watch that message there. Also, you can um, find us online at kinolabaptist.com. So news and I believe um, making a reservation for first service, you guys can do that there. And I think the last thing is, is that we have a new small group starting called 30 Minute Recap. So um, for the 1030 service, you have the option to join us online or in person at 9 30. it'll be kind of like a preview of the following service of, at 10 30. or you can join pastor daniel on tuesday in his small group so that 
Um, his one is also online, and I believe he's trying to transition his um, 10 o'clock one to be in person as well. So if you have any questions about small groups and the new 30-minute recap uh, small group, you can see me or Pastor Daniel. We'll be more than welcome to uh, fill you in on that. Uh, do we have any more announcements? I think that's it. I think that's all the announcements. All right. Um, we're going to continue and sing some songs. Oh, sorry. I missed the memory verse. We can do the July memory verse. So let's all say this together. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. 1 Peter 1.23. I'm going to pray and then we'll continue in music. Father God, we just thank you uh, for the opportunity to serve you and worship you together. I just pray that you would just remind us of your goodness this morning. Remind us of your faithfulness. Fill our hearts with joy and praise. Uh, we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together and sing. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, 
get you working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who. That is who you are. 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 We make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, miracle worker. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Amen. You may be seated. It appears, it appears that the world is getting darker. It says, don't be fooled. The world is not darker. It's the light in the darkness that is dimmer. And what he was basically referring to was the church. Is that the Bible says, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth, meaning you flavor you flavor my goodness. You flavor my presence with others. So don't be absent. Don't, don't withdraw from being that presence. You are the light of the world, meaning shine in the darkness. Let your light so shine before men, Jesus said, that they may see your good works and give honor or glorify your Father in heaven. And the scripture that I want to lead us in this pastoral prayer is from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Corinthian church. It was perhaps he was being honest with the Corinthian church saying, this is my worst nightmare. This is my worst nightmare. He says that we are all in a race. He says, do you not know that in a race all the runners run? but only one gets the prize. So run in such a way to get the prize. Meaning, when we live life, live life as if we are running in a race and there is a prize to be won. What is the prize? Well, he continues on and says, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight, I do not struggle, I do not wrestle like a man just beating the air, wasting my time. No, I beat my body, I make a focus, I keep on track, basically. So that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Yesterday's faith cannot help us 
through today's challenges, Paul would say, make sure you continue to update your faith. Make sure trust and obey is constantly your prayer. Lord, help me to trust and help me to obey. And so as we pray, Holy Father, your Bible tells us that your word will not return void. Meaning, you have a purpose for us to hear your word. But you also have told us, Lord Jesus, that the wise man is the one who hears your words and puts it into practice. That it is not enough to just hear your word. But Lord, we have to act on it. We have to make sure that the choices that we make fall in line with what you direct us through your word. And that is not always easy to do. Especially when it appears the world in which we live is so dark. But Lord, we ask you, shine brightly in our lives. Re, Lord, re-examine your, may your Holy Spirit help us that day by day, moment by moment, that we may choose to stay in the race to claim the prize. Help us, Lord. Guide, protect, strengthen, comfort. Help us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I often have told people that when I come across a good illustration, it's not necessarily good. I often tell people that uh, if, if I think and say something in spite sightful, it's either the Holy Spirit or strong coffee. Uh, hope it's not strong coffee because I only had half a cup today. But I've used this illustration a number of times. And those of you that are online, those of you that are in person, you've seen me use this. The Bible says that, that the one who seeks me with all your heart will find me. And so it is as every day you basically turn your cup, your life, upward towards God and says, God, fill my life. Fill me full. I need your power. I need your presence. I need your help. And so, as we turn our cup upwards to him, if you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. And so God can pour his presence, his, his power, his insights, his focus in us. But you know, whenever we get distracted, and we do often, especially when the world around us just appears to be going crazy, and the last 16 months have been crazy, has it not? We have all struggled just to make sense of it, and there still is no light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. We're still trying to figure it out. But what happens, unfortunately, is instead of seeking God with all of our hearts, we turn our cup outwards to people that we trust. The heroes, those that are champions that we are inspired by or we are uh, encouraged by, and we turn our cup sidewards to them. Well, unfortunately, what happens is there's very little of God that can be poured in a cup that is pointing sidewards. And we do that all the time, don't we? We have heroes in sports. We have heroes that, that we look forward to and listen. But literally, you have to keep on pointing your cup upward. Because as you turn your cup sidewards, you get discouraged. Because you find that no hero of yours, the created things, you've created in your mind a hero that's going to let you down, going to disappoint you, that's going to fail you. And what happens, unfortunately, for some, instead of striving to re-examine and turn your cup upward, this is what some people do. 
they get so discouraged, they give up. They say, I quit. I can't take it anymore. I just, I am so frustrated. I just give up. And so the presence and power of God cannot really help that person that has walked away from God. That is why we need each other. Because we all falter in our faith. And the Apostle Paul was writing to the churches saying, pray for me. I have preached to hundreds if not thousands. I have started churches. I have done all of this. But my greatest nightmare is after I've done all that, that I will be distracted and worse. I will make choices that literally tells God I give up. It's too hard. Are some of you there? Then I would say I'm so glad God brought you back to tune in or in person because I believe the exposition of Peter's letter to the churches is so helpful. I mean, how could a fisherman be so inspired by the Holy Spirit that almost every single line that he writes, it just invokes in us images. Like he was just saying, when I heard Jesus speak, and then he reads it to the uh, he shares it to the listeners. Everything. In just a short book. We've been three months in First Peter. And we're just starting chapter 2. I mean incredible. Line after line after line. So full of scriptural images. And so this morning. I'd like to just spend a few moments. I've entitled the message. Living Stones. And you have to ask, why did he, Peter, use the word stones and not rocks? Well, when I was in Kona, as I, we had church members that worked on the ranch there uh, in, outside of Pu'uanahulu, Pu'awa Ranch. And a good friend of mine built what he calls a cowboy wall. Some of you may be familiar with a cowboy wall. That means you don't use mortar or cement to put the pieces together. It's somehow so arranged that the weight of the stones on each other actually locks the stones in place. And they call it the cowboy wall. And I've seen it. As a matter of fact, you have seen it's just miles and miles of stone, of a wall, that you ask, when was this built? And some would say, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, and the wall still stands. Well, Peter tells his listeners that you are like that cowboy wall. You depend on each other's weight. As God knits us together to stay together, that's where the strength is. That's how you're going to overcome. By staying in his word and staying connected together. Absolutely essential. As he writes in 1 Peter chapter 2, he shares these words. As you come to him, the living stone, Rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him. Jesus rejected. He came to his own and his own did not receive him, the Bible says. And Jesus says, if they persecuted me, don't be surprised. That when you try to exercise your faith and live the faithful life, there will be those that will oppose you. Don't be surprised. Expect that opposition. He goes on, you also, living stones, like living stones, you are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. As you offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Not everything we do 
Not everything we do is acceptable. There will be those, as Jesus says, that cries out, Lord, Lord. And Jesus will say, I never knew you because your intention, your heart, your motivation is wrong. Come to him. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, Jesus says. I will give you rest. The living stone. But he continues. And he draws back into the Old Testament. As Steve mentioned, the Messianic scriptures in Isaiah, also in the Psalms, that the Old Testament is pointing forward to the Messiah, to Jesus coming. And then he says, for in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. And the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Again, the empty cup. The one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Don't be distracted and put your trust in other people. It will not stand. Any relationship, there will be disappointment. There will be discouragement. There will be frustration. But we are being built up. Peter says, into that spiritual house to be holy priests. I sometimes, when we pray, I don't feel so holy today, Lord. The choices I've made this past week hasn't been good choices. Forgive me. Help me once again to come to you, the living stone. Do you find your prayers like that a lot? You're almost apologizing. Yes, we're imperfect. But the worst choice is to just walk away and give up. The worst choice is, is to point your cup sideways to other people, for they will betray your trust. They will disappoint you. But he will never, it says, the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, you see the choice has always been ours to make. God never forces his right choices on us. Even though the life that he's given to you and me, the clock's ticking. Every minute you spend doing something you ain't going to do it some you ain't going to do something else that's just the way life is you got to make the choices and you got to make the good ones because good or bad the choices you make that day is gone you can't change it and so he says to those who do not believe the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone whether people put their trust in Jesus or not, that is their choice. But I'm just wondering, somehow, if maybe they don't understand that at the end of life, there will come a final accounting. And if you don't got Jesus, you got nothing. And that nothing is going to point you to a pathway of forever being separated from God. And God doesn't want anybody to miss out. And that's why he's left his church behind, you and me, to make a difference. You know, some of us remember the Trask sisters, uh, Haunani and Mililani. Now I know they, they have a certain image they're incredible women, Hawaiian women, highly educated. I mean, the PhDs these two ladies have, you know, they're, they're scholars. Well, Hanani K passed away last year at the very young age of 72 years old. But she, both of them, they chose to embrace the political world. You know, there are those of us that just want to abandon, just says, I don't trust them in government, and I just walk away. I won't vote. I won't participate. You know, but the Trask sisters were different. 
They says the only way for us to make a difference is to stay in politics. And so they had passion to promote the Hawaiian culture and use politics to help them to at least get the attention of people. This is what Hawaiian culture is. They never shied away from what they both considered a great tragedy. And that's part of our history, is it not? When the, the Hawaiian monarchy was overthrown back in the 1800s. And we are still facing the consequences of what happened back then. Several hundreds of years ago. But this is what Hanani Ke. She spoke prophetically of the need for Hawaiians to make an impact on their world, to not go quietly into the night, but use their energy to make a difference. This is what she said. It was so interesting as I read the article. It said, you cannot just dance hula and go to Hawaiian language class at night and think you're going to get a land base, meaning you're going to get people to, to get their attention. You ain't going to do that. Dancing hula, and just because you speak Hawaiian? He says, you can't do that. Cultural people have to become political. It's not just that political people like myself have to become cultural. Our culture cannot just be ornamental and recreational. That's what Waikiki is. Our culture has to be the core of our resistance. The core of our anger, the core of our mana or mana. That's what culture is for. What drives independence in all of us today is resistance. To resist what they're doing to our islands and to us. I think Jesus would say that maybe not as harshly. And maybe not as angrily as the Trash sisters. But they also... The scriptures tell us that to follow Jesus, we present the Christ culture, a Christ-like culture, what it means to walk like Jesus walks. And when we don't, we confuse everybody. And we don't make a difference. We don't stand up and be counted when we confuse people, if our culture is not Christ-like. So, Peter tells us, you got to come to him first. Christians must follow Jesus' example. Walk like Jesus walked. As goes Jesus, so goes his church. You want to know what, how Christians are to live? Then look to Jesus. You get a clue as to how you live, how you talk, how you conduct yourself. Walk like Jesus did. You know, Hanani K says that anger is really not a flaw. You use anger to respond to long-standing injustice. Well, Jesus would beg to differ. Jesus instead went the way of love. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. On the cross as he was dying, as the one who knew no sin became sin, as the wrath of God was poured out on his son, that three hours of darkness where Father, Son, Holy Spirit no longer won, but the Son because he became sin, was actually outside of the camp, separated. Jesus did that for us. So that God's wrath, his judgment, fell on his son. And yet Jesus did not use anger as the trigger, as the motivation. He used love. Father, forgive them. There is no greater love than a man who gives up his life for his friends. Christians must follow Jesus' example. Jesus is called the living stone. 
We're called living stones. Now, as on a side note, we all know in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that when Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? Some say that I am Elijah. Some say that you're John the Baptist. Some say that you are Jeremiah. And then Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? And what Jesus said in Matthew 16 is incredibly insightful for you and me. This is what Jesus said. And maybe this is why Peter didn't use the word rock, but used the word stones instead. You make up your mind. But this is what Jesus said. He said, when Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. Meaning you ain't going to get that in a book. You ain't going to get that with people teaching you. You're going to get that directly from the source, from the father himself. The Bible are just pages to be read. But what makes the Bible precious to us is the Spirit of God speaking to us the Word of God. That's what changes the book and makes it the living Word. Before Christ came into our lives, His Holy Spirit, you can read the book and remain unchanged. But once Christ came into your life by your invitation, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and, and eat with him and he with me. I will have intimate fellowship with you. Once that begins, whenever that begins, you are changed forever. And folks, Christians who remain unchanged are dangerous. They're dangerous to the body, and they're dangerous to those that they meet because they are betraying a life that's not his. So you got to ask, what happened? Why is Christ not in you? Why do you display tendencies that is so unchrist like I can't answer that question for you. Jesus says, by their fruit you will know whether they're of me or not, by their fruit. All I'm saying is what Peter said, or what Jesus says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. Make sure you keep the cup of your life always pointing upward, always open, always empty. Fill my cup, Lord. I have emptied every junk that I can think of, Lord. And Holy Spirit, if there's any more junk in my life that needs to be taken out, I get rid of, Lord, help me get rid of that. Now my cup is fully empty. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup. Because until the church begins to display that kind of devotion, the people that God wants us to connect with will not see his difference in us. And that's what makes us dangerous. You know, Paul writes to the Corinthian church and he says in 1 Corinthians 3, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder. Someone else is building on it, but each one should build with care. Did, did you hear that? Be careful how you build. Make sure the foundation you build is solid, the solid rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other Ground is sinking sand, the songwriter would say. Make sure, as he continues, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Don't you know 
that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst. You and I have the Holy Spirit to make a difference, to walk like Jesus walked. That's what the world needs to see us. We are no longer to be complacent, to get lax, to think that God will pass us by. God wants you and me to be used, to be His. There's a story that I read. And, you know, when Karen and I were in ministry school, one of my professors pointed out to the classes, you preacher boys, you don't want to go to missions chapel. Because you don't want to hear that the chapel speaker point to you and says, God is calling you to go overseas. Some of you are afraid to do that. Well, Karen and I, well, Karen worked during the chapel hour. I, I got to go to a lot of chapels, especially the missions chapel. Because I said, Lord, if there's any other place other than Hawaii that you want me, I want to know because I want to go. I don't want to ever go to a place that you haven't called me to. But, Lord, I feel convinced that you want Karen and me to return to Hawaii. But if that's not your choice, then, then tell us. And there's a story that is told of a missionary that went to the deepest reaches of Africa. And in this village, there were those villagers that responded to the gospel. And as the missionary was saying, it's going to cost you, it cost Jesus his life. It's going to cost you too. And so, pray. And as God leads you, you give something that is precious to you as a symbol of your sacrifice and of your obedience and devotion. And this young girl came and gave a coin worth 85 cents. 85 cents. And the missionary knew that that was more than this young girl possibly could have earned. And so he questions, says, you know, that is a lot. How did you come by this coin worth 85 cents? And this girl just simply said, I went to a neighboring farmer and I sold my life to serve this farmer for the rest of my life for 85 cents. My Jesus, I want to give him my life. I wonder if you and I come with that kind of devotion. Does Jesus deserve our all? We sing about it, don't we? But the proof is in our choices, is it not? God's going to send us out all over Hilo this week. And we're going to get to connect with people that are watching us. They know we are Christians. Or they've heard. But they need to see how Christians live. Father, help us as we prepare ourselves, Lord, to be sent back out. Literally to be your church, your hands, your feet. Help us, Lord, as we represent you. Forgive us when we fall so far short of what it means to follow Jesus. Lord, may it be that the same passion, this young girl, she did not see it as something to be held back, but she believed, Lord Jesus, that you are worthy 
of all honor and praise. And certainly, she was willing to give up her life to follow you. May we follow her godly example and do the same. And may you be honored in the choices that we make even this week and the conversations we have. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, He is my soul. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I the ransom for my life. Ask that you will remind us to turn to you, Father, to fill us up with your spirit, Father. Fill us with your joy. Fill us with your wisdom, Father. I just pray that uh, anything in our life that's crowding, crowding you out, Father, that we can 
let those things go, Father, that we can turn away from those things. Uh, we ask for your help in doing so, Father. We ask you for your spirit to help us repent of those things in our lives, Father, so that we can have more of you in our lives, Father. We just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I think we're going to do Keybotch News right now. Keybotch News. I think the only thing is just a reminder for the 30-minute recap, small group. So um, since you're here at 1030, if you're watching online, uh, we're doing a virtual group or a hybrid group where we have people online and in person starting at 930. So send us a DM. If you have questions or need the link for that, I can send you that. Um, for those of you that are in person here, uh, Pastor Daniel's doing an in-person one on Tuesday at 10 or an online one at 530 on Tuesday as well. So yeah. Uh, talk to us. If you have questions, send us a message. Uh, we would love to have you in a group. Uh, we're going to do one more song and then we'll hand it off to Pastor for the final word. So let's all stand together. Sing Light of Your Grace. truth is so much more this is how i know i'm secure that even though i keep falling your love for me endures in the light of your grace you in my darkness in the light of your grace my burdens lose their weight in the light of your grace you lift my head up in the light of your grace is how I know you're my Lord, that in my weakness you give me the strength to be restored. This is how I know I'm adored, that when I'm lost in my feelings, you tell me I am yours in the light of your grace. You in my darkness, in the light of your grace, my burdens lose their in the light of your grace you lift my head up in the light of your grace my sin is washed away head out of water walk on the ways this is how i know this is how i know i am yours this is how i know i'm secure this is how I know you're my Lord. This is how I know I'm a In the light of your grace, you in my darkness. In the light of your grace, my burdens lose their weight. In the light of your grace, you lift my head up. In the light of your grace, my sin is washed away. You know, when Joshua took over for that great leader, Moses, God told him in Joshua 1, be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and courageous. And, you know, I, I remember that part of God's instructions to, to Joshua. And let me find that just so that I say it the right way. He says this, 
I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, the great river, the Euphrates, all the way to the great sea on the west, the Mediterranean. I'm reminded of a story where the king had a devoted subject. And the king was willing to give that subject a piece of land as long as he marked it. And so the subject came, came to the king and he drew a circle around his feet. And the king questioned his subject saying, that's all you want? What's inside the circle? He says, actually, king, I want everything outside the circle. I want your whole kingdom. Now, that sounds rather brash and arrogant, would you not think? But you see, that's what God was telling to Joshua and to us is that God wants his kingdom to be extended everywhere you and I have influence. And so this week, be an influence. Be a connection. We're not perfect, but Christ in us gives others hope. Don't be absent. Father, I pray your blessing upon your people. That everywhere they go, may the fragrance of life, Lord, be extended to all those they connect this week. In their homes, in their neighborhoods, in their workplaces, in the schools in which they attend. Lord, you want your people to be present. You want your presence in us to be seen. So, Lord, help us to represent you well this week. Give us all that we need. Lord, help us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Thank you for coming today.